Welcome to homeostasis and negative feedback. Let us look at the concept of homeostasis. Homeostasis is maintaining a constant internal environment. That means every factor in your body is at balance. That's the easiest way to remember it. I've done for you terminology, which we do at the beginning of each section. So let's just go through some of them. Terminology, homeostasis, there is it. Maintaining a constant internal environment. Please learn this. Learn it well. So on the side, I'm going to write, take possible examination question. It's a terminology. In this one as well, I'm linking up the end of endocrine with this section here. Negative feedback system. What is a negative feedback system? It is one when there is a deviation from the normal state. For example, your uh, blood glucose level is higher than the normal state. The human body corrects the deviation. That means this highness or this large amount of glucose is in your body. It, it's a deviation. The body has to correct it. How does it correct it? It causes a change to occur in the opposite direction. And in doing so, it cancels the deviation. The rest of the terminology you can do. Glucose is your main source of energy. Glycogen stored form of excess glucose, insulin, glucagon, ADH. We have done this in depth in the endocrine system. And again, we do not want to listen. We do not want to learn. Um, we do not want to learn sections in isolation. We want to learn them together. Let's move on to the next slide. The rest of the terminology. I want to again talk to you about another term called homeo, uh, homeothermic. Homeothermic are warm-blooded animals such as us. Our body gets, maintains a constant temperature irrespective of outside temperatures. And then you have cold-blooded animals. The proper biological term for that is poikilothermic. And these organisms cannot maintain the temperature and the temperature will, internal temperature will fluctuate, fluctuate with that of the environment. And an example is lizard. Hypothermia, hypo meaning low, L-O, body temperature drops below 36, 37 degrees Celsius for a long period. Hypothermia, the body temperature rises above 37 degrees. Vessel meaning blood vessel. Dilation means to open, like cervix dilating during childbirth. Vessel, again, blood vessels. Constricting meaning close. C for constrict, C for close, and C for colding. We're going to do this in more detail. Let us look at the negative feedback system of thyroxin. We know that thyroxin is produced from the thyroid gland. And to produce thyroxin, we know there's an element called iodine that's needed. And we spoke about iodated salt. And for the thyroid gland to produce thyroxin, you need TSH, which is going to stimulate it from the pituitary gland. This is all revision. But like I said, to not learn each section in isolation. Let us look at the normal level of thyroxin. What happens if your thyroxin level increases? This immediately is sent by the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland reduces the production of TSH. See, level increases, reduces TSH. This is a negative feedback system. Negative means a negative reaction is to take place to counteract this deviation. So because the pituitary gland produces less TSH, less TSH will go to the thyroid gland and therefore less thyroxin will be produced. And in doing so, the level of the thyroxin in the blood goes back to normal. Let's look at the other scenario. Thyroxin level in drops. What happens? If thyroxin level drops, that means we need more TSH. And you see, increase of TSH. If there's more TSH from the pituitary gland, this goes to the thyroid gland and produces more thyroxin, and therefore the level increases. This is a negative feedback system. Let's look at glucose. We're looking at the normal level of glucose. And before we do that, let's look at glucose being the primary or main source of energy. So any carbohydrate that you eat, will be eventually converted into glucose. We've done this in the grade 11 syllabus, good people. 
glycogen is excess glucose is stored and how to remember this my beautiful people think about jinn they say that jinn is better when it's older so jinn is better when it's stored glucose stored is glycogen and what is glucagon when glucose is gone the hormone glucagon is produced by the pancreas if you remember it like that you're going to be really good there let's look at your normal level of glucose right normal level of glucose what happens is let's move we sing here when the level above normal when the level increases above normal so your normal glucose level should be about 4 or 5 mg um okay so it's increased now you've eaten a quarter you've had a lunch bar and you've had um energy because you think this is going to help you to concentrate in the life science class what happens your blood glucose level increases the pancreas detects this and it is and then we have the beta cells remember i told you burn remember the word burn the beta cells produce insulin and then these beta cells produce insulin the insulin goes to the blood stream and what does it do it takes that glucose and sends it to the muscles to be used in the skeletal uh, part of your body and also all the excess glucose it takes it to the liver and it stores it what happens the glucose level returns back to normal that look what happens when your glucose level drops the fasting month is coming up now for the muslims you will feel even if you fasting during lent you feel a little bit of dizzy spells your stomach is aching you're hungry your glucose level in your blood drops just again sense by the pancreas the pancreas the islet of langerhans we're going to have the alpha cells they produce glucagon because what has happened glucose is gone so glucagon is produced and then that goes to the liver and converts the glycogen back to glucose and puts it back into the blood stream which brings your glucose level back to normal negative feedback This is just to tell you where we are now. We're still on homeostasis and we're doing negative feedback. Let's look at glucose regulation that we've just done in the flow diagram. Let's look at it. Glucose level increases above normal. The perfect time that this should happen is about lunchtime. Or like I said, during your break time, you're overeating. You're stressed. Some people eat out of stress. Your pancreas secretes insulin. Insulin travels through the blood. Can you see? and it stimulates the conversion of excess glucose to glycogen and stores it glucose level drops returns back to normal glucose level decreases to normal how are we doing of course when we're looking at the glucose level increases the opposite is going to happen um the decreases the opposite will happen and we look at glucagon I left it for you to do on your own because I do not want to spoon feed you. You have to be ready for your exam and next day you have varsity. Let's look at how carbon dioxide is regulated. Your carbon dioxide level increases above normal. Perhaps you're not breathing um, sufficiently inhaling and exhaling receptors in the neck in the neck. Sorry, that's not neck in the neck. Let's correct that. My apologies. receptors in the neck the carotid receptors you don't have to worry about that they stimulate it and what do they do they send impulses to the medulla oblongata because we know that's where breathing is controlled first medulla oblongata sends impulse uh, sends instruction to the breathing muscles in the heart the breathing muscles are your intercostal muscles and diaphragm you've done that great heaven i do it again with you the intercostal muscles and diaphragm are your breathing muscles these become more active and your rate and depth of breathing increases so you start breathing faster and deeper as doing this your heart starts beating faster what does this cause this causes the excess co2 to be exhaled quicker thus returning the levels of co2 back to normal and this is exactly what causes a panic attack when there's high concentrations of CO2 
in your body and you're having a panic attack, your breathing starts reducing, your rate, rate and death of breathing becomes lesser. And that is why they put a black, uh, they put a brown packet around your mouth or a plastic packet or any packet. Because of that, you're forced to drink, to inhale and exhale your CO2. And because you're doing that in the packet, this sends immediate signals to the medulla oblongata, and then this causes your breathing muscles and your heart to increase, your breathing muscles to, to cause increasing rate and depth of breathing, your heart beats faster, and the CO2 is expelled, and your panic attack goes off, goes away. And that's something just for interest for you. Let's look at the skin. Remember that the skin is the largest part, largest organ. They ask you this sometimes for MCQ. MCQ question, it's, uh, put it here, multiple choice questions, which is the largest part of your body, and they give you a whole lot of options. The skin is the largest part of your body. It's covering your entire surface area. I need you to focus on sweat glands and blood vessels and not on hair. Let us move on beautiful, intelligent people. Here's the structure of your skin. The skin is made up of two layers. The epidermis and the dermis. See how wide the dermis is compared to the epidermis. We're going to look at what, is made, what are the layers in the epidermis, but let's just look at the structure quickly. You can see that around the hair, hair follicle, there is a sebaceous gland. The sebaceous gland produces sebum. The sebum is an oily substance that lubricates your skin, and it's actually here at this part where you can get acne because if you produce too much of sebum and dust particles settle on your pore, that's how you get a blackhead or a pimple. And when you have acne, this is because your sebaceous glands are very active. Then we look at the sensory nerve endings. Here's it here. There's different types. We're going to look at it just now. Here's your dermis, we said. There is your muscles. Look at your arteries or arteriole is a small artery and your venule, the blue one. Also, so your skin is also receiving oxygenated blood. It's also receiving nutrients. It's alive. And it's that, that CO2 and nutrients must be taken away by your venule. And here's your sweat gland. Nice diagram to learn. This is your entire thing, your sweat gland. Can you see sweat gland? Sweat pore or sweat dot. And here's your sweat pore on the surface of the skin. Let us move on, my intelligent people. Here's your four layers of your epidermis, the horny layer, non-granular layer, granular layer. The malphigian layer contains melanin. What is this? It's a color. This gives you the color of your skin. The more melanin you have, the darker is your skin, the more well protected you are against UV radiation, which causes skin cancer. The less melanin, the lighter your complexion, the more exposed you are to UV radiation and the more in danger you are of skin cancer. All right, there's your dermis. Look at the functions of your dermis. It contains blood vessels, nutrients, oxygen, CO2. Vessel meaning blood vessels, constriction, cold, closed. Vessel dilation, dilate, open. Blood vessels open on a hot day. Your sensory receptors, the names, let's learn it. Raphne is a specialist. Fire, think about fire. And therefore, that's your heat corpuscle. And this you probably get in matching column. Or even MCQ. So this is something you get in section A. All right? So not to stress, just learn it. F for fire, heat. Kraus and C have the same phonetical sound. Kraus or cold. Meisner's, you have to learn touch. And Pacini, P. Pressure and in the last one is free nerve ending. So I've given you ways to remember them. Here's your functions of your skin sensation, protection, heat regulation. You can go through this on your own. And let's look what happens on a hot day. On a hot day, vasodilation, vaso, blood. Dilate means to open. So if it's dilate during labor. Your pupils dilate in dark light. Dilate means to open. So on a hot day, you don't want your temperature to be above 37 degrees Celsius. Here's your thermometer. I told you, remember this. This hypothalamus thermometer. Think of it like this. So this is stimulated in your brain. This sends impulses to your blood vessels in your skin. Blood vessels become wider. 
This is called vasodilation. So more blood flows from the internal part of your body to the surface of the skin. When this happens, it carries with it heat. Heat is lost to the environment. Your sweat glands are stimulated. It becomes more active. You perspire more. And we know that perspiration causes, causes cooling of the body. I have not done cold days. Cold days, C for cold, C for vasoconstriction, C for clothes. I left that for you to do on your own because I know that you're intelligent and you're quite capable. Let us look at this again, a flow diagram, hypothalamus in the brain, thalamus, your thermometer. Let's look at it. Let's take a sample one. Body temperature increases about 37 degrees Celsius. There's a heat wave. All right? Obviously, when there's a heat wave, you're not going to be dressed or warm because this is one of the mechanisms you, you know that you're not going to be overdressed. You won't have a jersey. And then what happens? Hypothalamus increasing body temperature. Hypothalamus is stimulated. Hair cells will lie flat. There'll be an increase in sweating. Sweating causes cooling. As it causes cooling, increased cooling. So we say cooling occurs. And as this happens, you're going to see your body temperature is decreasing back to 37. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Let's look at what happens when your body temperature decreases. We're coming towards winter now. So what happens? Your hair rises. When we've seen people having goosebumps, you're cold. Blood supply to the skin is decreased because you don't want to lose that heat. That heat must be taken to your internal organs. And you see this where your face is blue, your lips are blue, your nails are blue and cold because all that heat is taken away from your surface of your skin to your internal organs where it's really needed. You don't want to sweat. You don't want to sweat because that's going to cause you to cool more. And there your body temperature starts increasing back to your 37 and all of that is controlled by the hypothalamus. Another way to increase your body temperature is shivering. This generates more heat and we move on. Are you coping with me? Look at this. This is a diagram to show you. Look how blue your fingers become. You can see there's arteries and uh, veins, small arteries and small veins, arterioles and venules here. Can you see this? Look how blue your fingernail fingers are. This is because what has happened? The blood has been taken away from your surface of your skin to your internal organs. And like I said, you can see this with your lips being blue, your face being pale. And this is... This is on a cold day, so we're going to say this is vasoconstriction. And this is on a hot day, so this is vasodilation. How's that? And you can feel that your hands are hot during that time. They are warm. All right, let's look at the blood vessels. Look at here. Can you see that the blood vessels have dilated? And can you see that heat is rushing up? Normal. Towards the blood, heat is carried in the blood and it's moving outwards. While in vessel constriction, you can see that the blood vessels are narrow. Blood flow is blocked. Constricted digital artery. That means in your finger, digital are your digits, your fingers. Don't go and buy heart dissection. Understanding. The more you understand, the better it's going to become. And remember, understanding eliminates swatting. Understand, my good people, my beautiful, intelligent babies. Understand the section. It's not difficult. Here's just to reinforce. Here's your hair sharp coming out of your derma, your epidermis. Look at your dermis. How epidermis is thin. Look at your dermis. How thick. Here's your sweat gland. They can ask you to draw this. Your sweat gland, your sweat dart coming out of the surface, your sweat pot, just where the hair is. Here's your sebaceous glands. It's producing oil. It's a lubricant for your skin. And... Hair follicle, you don't need to know. Let's look at it again here. Here's your pores, sweat glands, sweat duds, sweat pore. How are we doing, my darlings? Coping with me? And now I've given you some pictures of what will the vessels look like. This is vasodilation. This is what a normal, what your normal blood vessel in your skin would look like. Look at this. Dilation is on a hot day. Constriction, C for constrict, C for close. Cold, C4, close. Look how small the diameter is here compared to the normal diameter. 
This is a cold day because you don't want to lose heat to the surface. You want the heat to be taken to your internal organs. This is normal blood vessel and look at A. A dilation. You see the arrow showing you that the blood vessels open up and all the extra heat that's in your body will come out. Sweating will be increased. Your sweat glands will be stimulated, become more active and you will cool down. So there's a picture just to reinforce and show you a little bit more. Again, recapping, let's look. Sweat gland, sweat touch. How are we doing? Can we label that beautiful people? Sweat touch, you label it with me. It would be a nice diagram if they ask you this in the final. And we're going to say sweat pour. Okay. And the hair is pulled upright for maximum insulation. So if you look at this, can you see constricted blood vessel? It's a cold day. Cold, constricted, cold. And therefore you can see the hair is upright because it's going to trap heat between it. Sun blood vessels radiate less heat. How is that? Can you see? Let us move on. Bright sparks. Keep calm and maintain homeostasis. Let us look at the importance of homeostasis. And we know that definitely temperature is very important. Just a few factors. If your temperature in your body is too high, your enzymes become denatured. It causes a fever. Fever can lead to convulsions. Your met metabolic processes, which is, con which is controlled by enzymes, get affected. If the temperature in your body is too low, hypothermia, then the enzymes become inactive. The systems get shut down. See how important homeostasis is? Varying amounts of water and tissue fluid. If you can't have too much of each tissue fluid in your body, it causes oedema. Right? We don't want to... Uh, to uh, gather too much of liquid in our body, around our heart, it causes other issues and people have to go on medication and we don't want to become dehydrated either. Let's look at carbon dioxide. Remember, Matula oblongata. If there's too much carbon dioxide and you're not exhaling it fast enough, it's going to affect a carbonic acid, which we don't want very bad. It affects acidity, your pH, your enzyme activity. So you can see how all of this is linked. Even if your glucose level is not constant, it's going to affect metabolism. You can become diabetic. How's that? So can you see that homeostasis is linked in every part of every part of the syllabus, every part of your body? You are a walking, talking machine. And you're perfect. Be calm and maintain homeostasis. Even in your studying, maintain a balance. Balance. Work hard. Play hard. How's that for homeostasis? And then I put some exam type of questions for you. I want you to answer it and then get back to me on WhatsApp and I'll post the memo with you, my darlings. Let's look at diagram one. It's showing you blood flow. Look at that. Look at this is your sweat gain and they're showing you something here. Sweating, perspiration. And then look at this one. So you can see where the blood vessels are wider and where they narrower. The wider ones are dilation, the narrow ones are called constriction. And then you answer that, my intelligent children. And then I put something else for you, supplies. Identify the hormone involved in the picture below and provide five changes the body undergoes to cope with the situation. All right. We don't know who to name in the class here. You can decide. And this is probably me. I know you're thinking that. Um, and then I put a little essay question for you. Describe the role of the hypothalamus, thalamus thermometer, and the adrenal glands, adrenaline, and bring about changes in the blood vessels in the human skin and explain why these changes take place. So how are you going to uh, how are you going to approach this essay? You're going to take headings. You're going to see the headings, and you're, I'm not going to give you all the answers. I'm going to just give you a clue: adrenal glands, hypothalamus, blood vessels, and you can put that in headings and you can write a nice neat perfect essay just like you and then keep calm maintain homeostasis i put a nice rap song for you learn it enjoy it i love you you can never disappoint me make me prouder than what i am of you take care goodbye people.